So I set up the telescope, we're going to find the hidden gems within the Andromeda galaxy. Now what makes this site so incredible is that even with a small setup, you can make out the bright core, you can make out the galactic disk. But tonight we're going to find supermassive stars, individual stars within the Andromeda galaxy. We're going to find clouds of obscuring dust in the satellite galaxy and even a globular cluster, even a cluster that actually may be the core of a dwarf galaxy that collided with the Andromeda galaxy. And make sure you stay to the end. We're going to also check in on our supernova, the supernova we saw in the earlier video, some 47 million light years away. So we have a clear night, we have a moon free night and we have a cloud free night. So we're gonna roll the observatory roof back. And as you can see, I've changed the configuration of the mount. I now have it in the uh, equatorial mode. So the first thing I'm gonna to have to do before we put the camera in is just check that we're polar aligned. The better the polar alignment, the better the live stack will be where there'll be less trailing between the frames. And this is why I love using SharpCap because I can twiddle the mount over and it tells me the error and more importantly, it tells me the corrections. So firstly, I'm going to adjust the altitude of the mount, bring that down, trying to get the altitude error as close to zero and then I'm going to adjust the left and the right. And I always find the left and the right much harder to adjust than the altitude. And again, I'm trying to get that error as close to zero, get it as closely aligned to the celestial pole as we can. Oh, we've got an excellence. I've got an excellence. I'm inclined just to leave it there. That's probably going to be good enough for me. Right, let's go and do some astronomy then. So while the telescope is slewing to the Andromeda galaxy, I should explain we're actually using the smaller 90 millimeter refractor, the Megway 90, that's riding piggyback on top of the larger C11, the Celestron C11. So we'll start off with a small wide angle view and then we'll switch over to the, the bigger C11. Oh, there's something there. What I find incredible about this live stacking is that within so 40 seconds, a minute or so, I've already got the spiral arms, two satellite galaxies, you know, the dust lanes of the Andromeda galaxy already just appearing on the on the screen. Oh, this gives me so much fun. Look at that Milky Way as well. Wow. That is pretty. So we've done a about, what's that then? Oh, just over 20, or well, nearly 23 minutes looking at the Andromeda galaxy. This absolutely blows me away. Look at the detail, you know, with the, with the telescope, with the refractor. This sort of bright nucleus region right in the center. The milky white bits radiating out from either side. We've got these dark dust lanes, the sort of spiral arms, inclined spiral arms. Isn't that beautiful? And then those are two spiral galaxies, uh, M32 and M110. Now you can see these with a pair of binoculars, they're not that hard to see, you know, as long as you're away from the city lights, away from the light pollution. And there's another interesting object, star region over here. This is MGC 206. That's a star forming region, a OB star cluster, I think it is, star association inside the galaxy. So what we're gonna do then, is I'm going to stop this. I'm going to put the camera in the C11 and we're going to go and do some close-ups of the galaxy. Oh, this is so exciting. So that's the camera installed in the telescope and I've also got the F6 focal reducer. We've got plenty of aperture, plenty of resolution. Next thing I've got to do is check the focus, make sure we've got a nice, clear, symmetrical star pattern and then we are good to go. Perfect. Right. So let's just go and have a look then. Now we're on line up. Oh, look at that. 
even though we've only caught what's that 30 seconds of exposures i can already see that we've got stars inside the andromeda galaxy those stars there those stars inside that cluster that's slowly appearing are stars inside the andromeda galaxy oh look at that so individual stars inside a star cluster inside the andromeda galaxy two minutes 30 seconds of exposure and i can see stars inside another galaxy i've just looked up and we've got loads of cloud and when i say loads of cloud i mean completely covering the sky loads of cloud um, i'm going to leave it a few minutes then and probably going to get a cup of tea and fingers crossed you'll see me in a few minutes so I've just gone to get myself a cup of tea. It's now coming up to, how well, much time have we got in there? It must be about 20 minutes or so. Oh, 23 minutes of data we've captured, which in astronomy with imaging terms is nothing. But with this live stacking and with a cup of tea in my hand, you know, I can see you know, these individual stars, these dust clouds are really starting to come out now. But look at that detail inside another galaxy a lot of people use you know this wide field yeah like the refractor like a telephoto lens but uh just goes to show that you can do quite a lot as well with the high resolution instruments peering inside getting the details as well maybe one of those pictures to do is gosh how long would it take to do a whole mosaic of the mo of the andromeda galaxy to that sort of resolution goodness me that is stunning i'm so pleased with that I can sit here listening to the owls, looking out for meteors, watch the Milky Way go past, got my cup of tea, looking at stars inside the Andromeda galaxy. And, oh, so pleased I stayed up late. I was almost tempted to pack up when the cloud came in, but only a few minutes later it all drifted past. Do you know, I think I should show you the star cloud, the dust cloud inside M110. So that's do one last save then save with adjustments or we'll stop the live stack we'll go to this messier one done go to obviously not very far so there's m110 slap in the field of view just start to see the little dust cloud there so i'll leave that running for a few minutes karen drinking my tea and i'll bring you back in in a few minutes time oh what a night beautiful sky so after what's that 13 minutes 13 and a half minutes of looking at the satellite galaxy m110 messier 110 but you can actually see there are two little dust clouds just alongside the nucleus. Two little dust clouds. What looked in the small refractor to be, you know, sort of small featureless cloud actually got some little details in that. As soon as you crank up the magnification, of course, you won't you won't see. How cool is that? I'm so pleased. So pleased we carried on. I was tempted to pack up. Oh, when those clouds came in, I'm so pleased we carried on. Look at this. Seeing those stars inside the star cluster and I see dust clouds inside the satellite galaxy as well right so one of the things that you can also see in the Andromeda galaxy is the biggest globular cluster or the Andromeda galaxy's biggest globular cluster now it's not in my catalog so I've got to type the coordinates in I'm looking this up in sky safari uh, right ascension 34 10 34 10 declination 3943 14 go to so goodbye to Messier 110 bye to the satellite galaxy now I have actually observed this visually if you want to see a video about that it's one of my old videos but it was good fun hunting it down with this telescope all right hopefully then in the field of view there are, oh, yes, that's it. Little Mickey Mouse ears. 
And those two little stars, they look just like Mickey Mouse. You know, to really crank up the power to to separate the, the globular cluster from the two little field stars. Oh, that's brilliant. Right, so if I leave that recording then, leave that stacking. So after, oh, what's this? I think about 10 minutes. Yeah, just over 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 seconds. You can just see that that star there is a fuzzy, slightly elongated blob with a little bit of averted imagination. If you squint a little bit, you can see it's not a round disc like the stars are, slightly elongated and slightly fuzzy. I wonder if I can crank that magnification up a bit. It's not a spherical star, it's a slightly fuzzy edge, somewhat. But this is with an amateur telescope in the garden in southern England on a sort of hazy, hazy night after the rain stopped. You can actually see that's not a star, that's actually a little star cluster, but a star cluster inside another galaxy and it just blows me away every time. I think what I'm going to do now, because it's going to about half past one, just gone half past one, so I'm going to get a bit sleepy. I'm going to have a quick look at our supernova in, uh, in Pegasus and then call it a night. So I hate meridian flips when the telescope swaps sides on the mount. I've got to be really careful with the power cable, the camera cable, making sure they don't get caught, to make sure they don't get ripped out. So while I'm fighting the cables, I'm going to say thank you to the Patreons. Thank you once again for your support. And now let's go back to the galaxy. Well, there it is. Wow, straight away. And there is our supernova. Just alongside the nucleus. Oh, that is pretty, isn't it? Oh, that's good. I'm loving using the colour camera. It's rather nice seeing everything in colour. Right, I'll leave that to, to build up. I'll have another sip of my tea. Look at that for a nice guy. Oh, wow. The good thing about this galaxy as well, you get to see the distant galaxies as well, much, much further away, much, much further in the background. I really do enjoy this live stacking. When I'm tired, you know, I don't want to observe, you know, use the binovia and observe. It's, it's so much easier just to see it on the screen. I get to see that nucleus of the galaxy, the spiral arms, the outer regions. 